So this is one interesting portable SSD and I haven't seen anything like that before. So this is by a company called Orico and they advertise USB 4 speeds and 40 gigabits transfer speeds. Let's see if that's true. Looking for a cheap way to license your Windows? Check out WhoKeys through the links in the video description. Make sure to use the code TN20 to get a 30% off. Paste the license to the activation settings and you're all done. This license is for Windows 10, but you can upgrade it to Windows 11 for free. They also offer Microsoft Office 19 license. Use the same code TN20 to get a 30% off. Check out WhoKeys.com in the video description below. So first of all, this Orico S SSD, portable SSD is actually available on Amazon and you can buy it and I can see that there's a 5, 10, 20 and 40 gigabit like versions available, gigabits per second that is, and from 256 gigabytes to 2 terabyte in size. I have the 1 terabyte size and this is USB 4 which is very similar to Thunderbolt uh, 4 which advertises like 40 gigabits per second kind of you know bandwidth transfer. Not all of it is data transfer, some of it is you know uh, like video and so on, but this is USB 4 actually so it's, it's slightly different very similar but it advertises that it does come with this um, cable that's very nice braided cable here it's very thick it says 40 gigabits per second so it's USB C to USB C and then it comes from USB A to USB C cable as well and then here's the actual portable SSD uh, Orico here and then we just have a USB C port with 40 gigabits per second now I'm not particularly fond of this design it's all right but the main thing is how well does it perform? So I've got this Legion uh, over here and Lenovo Legion 5i Pro and it's got a Thunderbolt 4 port on the side here with USB-C. So I'm going to connect it to that one and we're going to see if this is going to work. Okay, that's on. Alrighty then. So let's go to Windows PC. Interesting. It doesn't actually uh, recognize it. Ah, uh, all right. So it recognizes the actual disk, so it doesn't actually have it uh, initialized. So I do have to make actually a simple volume here to get it working at first. Okay, there we go. Here is the SSD. So this is connected now through the Thunderbolt form. And let's do a speed test on here. Okay, very interesting results here. As you can see, the read speed is 3000 megabytes per second. That's absolutely amazing. Now, to get this on any of the like enclosures and NVMe closures is absolutely amazing. Now, the write speed is uh, 1769 megabytes per second or so. So, not the fastest. So, basically, if you're writing files on it, copying from your computer, it's almost half the speed. But when you're reading from them or like pulling files from this, to the computer, it's 3,151 megabytes per second. Now, what I want to do is also test the other USB-C port here. So this should be 10 gigabits port now. So let's see if it still comes up. There we go. There's the Orico SSD. Let me just screenshot that. We're gonna do the same test, but just now it's on the 10 gigabit port. I want to see what the read and write speeds are then. Okay, and the second results are in, and now you can see that we're just limited to 1000 megabytes per second. So pretty much like the 10 gigabits per second uh, kind of port limitation, which is which is still like very, very fast. If you don't have a USB 4 or Thunderbolt port on your computer, you're still gonna get super fast connectivity from here. But then in that case, unless you wanna future proof yourself to get like faster transfers in the future, I'd recommend going with like the 10 gigabit or 20 gigabit version. The 20 gigabit version actually is quite interesting to me because I think this is not quite USB 4 or Thunderbolt like kind of connection it, it really um, you need to have like a USB 3.2 Gen 2 X2 port in order to get that actually out there so that's a bit interesting so I'm going to disconnect that and I'm going to go back to that Thunderbolt 4 port on this laptop and what I want to do now is to see actual real world like transfer performance uh, because very often you can get these benchmarks, but then the transfer speed actually comes down. So we're going to see if it can keep up with the um, actual, you know, like transfer speed. So right now we're going to go for the right speed and that should be like um, about 1700 megabytes per second. Okay, let's try this. This is three gigabytes, 800 megabytes per second. Very fast. See, it doesn't even, it can't fully speed up before we do that. So I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger. Let's see how fast does this folder transfer. 800 megabytes per second. Pull the next one in. 
Um, together we're gonna get about thousand megabytes per second. Uh, let's see if we pull a third folder. Okay, that's that gets too fast here. So we're gonna drag one. Then we're gonna drag another one. And then a third one. And then I'm gonna drag a fourth folder as well. Just because how Windows works. So what speeds are we gonna get? here now about 400 megabytes per second 400 and 400 so 1200 megabytes per second uh actual speeds so it, it doesn't quite reach that 1700 uh you know write speeds as you can see just because of how windows transfers uh, work and so on and as you can see if you just transfer one folder or one block of files it, it's limited to about 800 megabytes per second that's why you should always like get another one there as well because then it will start transferring those like multiple files at the same time. So tip is like if you have loads of files to transfer, take like two blocks of them and start transferring them. And then you get faster speed. As you can see, this is like one gigabyte over one gigabytes per second. Whereas previously, if I did one folder, now it only has about 800 megabytes per second. So we're getting a little bit of a faster speed. But it looks like it's not slowing down in terms of the speed here. It's gone all the way like 800 megabytes per second. It's not like capping there. It's going solid to that speed now. How big was this folder here? That was 11 gigabytes per second. I'm gonna copy that whole thing now because this is about 100 gigabytes per second to see if it actually like pulls down in speed. As you can see now it pulls about 800 and a bit more megabytes per second. Now it's 700 and something. So around 800 megabytes per second still. Okay. That's interesting now. Look at that. It did actually drop down here. I don't know if, if this is because of the heat or something, but there is almost like a, like a DRAM or something. After a while, it drops the speed almost three times to 300 megabytes per second. Now, the interesting thing would be if when I start to transfer speeds now again to see if it's going to start it with from 800 or straight away from 300 megabytes per second. So let's Let's do that again. I'm gonna watch this. I'm just gonna put some random there. So I can copy this again. Another 100 gigabytes of files coming now. Unless it's the type of files that it just can't do so fast. But because as you can see, I did it exactly the same again now. The same folder transferred again. And the same thing happened. And it went around 300 megabytes per second when it hit like that bunch of files there. So I think it's not to do with the actual SSD like heating up and then slowing down. It's just with those bunch of files that like it, it can't for some reason read fast enough. Let's see if it actually speeds up again in the end there. That's interesting because it was transferring those files slow there. So if I take transfer everything very, very fast, but some of these files in a previous long, bigger transfer, it was actually doing them slowly. And then now if I do the same with these, interesting. So here's the conclusion. Is this SSD actually worth it? And would this be interesting for creators or not? And honestly, I'm very, very impressed. Just because it does say 40 gigabits per second, often it doesn't work anything, or is there like a, a little bit of a time, but this seems to be very, very fast all the time. I mean, maximum speeds of 3000 megabytes per second. That's really, 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 really fast. So this is probably for people who want to go like on the go editing and want something that's super fast and super fast external um, SSD, whether you're editing on maybe some of the MacBook Pros with M1 chips, M1 Max chips or something like that, then uh, this would be like very, very good for you because you know, you've got the Thunderbolt 4 connector. It still uses the same kind of controller, not Thunderbolt, can't say that really because you know, efficiently it isn't, but it works very, very similar. So you do get those, those fast transfer speeds if you are you know out of your internal ssd you can't add any internal ssd this is fantastic drive anyway go check that out in the description below i'm very impressed plus anti-drop stable whatever that means stable what is stable extremely fast transmission transfers honestly i can't fault this drive i think this is very very interesting by the way if you watched it till this part of the video i think there is an actual like a discount code that you can check out in the description below as well and the disclaimer is orico just said can we just send you this i said sure i tested it out they haven't paid me to make this video. They don't even know what I'm saying. Um, they haven't even checked out. I think I should have made that video like ages ago, but here we go. It's here, but I do think there is a little discount code if you want to pick up this in the description below. So go check it out there. Thanks guys for watching. Bye-bye.